a company like NVIDIA wasn't doing everything in its power to buy ARM, the creators of the technology, That's to true. make some more switches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes I live in my own little bubble. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben. Jordan died, so that's John. <laughs> Bye, John. I, I took over for him is, for uh, <laughs> an episode. You know, secretly, we've just aged Jordan. Jordan, look into your yeah. future. Look at your hands. Look at your hands. <laughs> and of course, stayed up late, but not quite as late, because... F you, time change. Yes. Pedro <laughs> Mateus. Together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, help in this form. You know him, you love him. Cocaine. Voltron. That's too good. I don't think YouTube cares anymore. They're like, whatever, we're going to put ads on everything now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And force everyone to watch them after the first three videos of no ads. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that's like. Um, nor will I. <laughs> Neither will I. <laughs> What's up? Once new, I, I I broke up with Thunderbird again. <laughs> that was that was a couple of weeks. <laughs> that was a pretty good run, though. I, so, yeah, uh, yeah. I went from Evolution. I'm like, you know what? I'll try this Thunderbird thing out again. And they changed the uh, user interface, and I fought through the. This is different. I hate it. As one does, you know, you look at it like, okay, I, I'm just hating this because it's not the thing it was for 20 mm -hmm. years. <laughs> They changed the thing to where on, um, I have seven email accounts that I use. In order to see the inbox, I have to expand the inbox. You can imagine that gets long with seven of them. In order to see the mail, like if I click on the mail, I'm like, no, I have to expand it, click inbox in order to see that. No. So what do you do? You go into combined view and you're like, oh, this is kind of neat. I'll try to use this. what I've been using the past couple of weeks. <laughs> and it doesn't work. <laughs> It will just straight up lie to you, man. It was like, you have 12 spam messages. Click. And I was like, well, it did the last time I checked it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it, then I finally tapped out because it was convinced I had one message in my inbox and it was not there in any of the accounts. Like I spent half an hour going through everything. I'm like, where is this phantom message? Sounds like you're just in a toxic relationship. <laughs> uh, I, I went back to evolution. <laughs> Evolution works. So, like, whatever. Like, me and what? Nine other people still use desktop email clients. Hey, I use Thunderbird. <laughs> Eight. I've been using Thunderbird this whole time. It lives in the corner of the monitor that I have in portrait mode. Mm -hmm. The bottom half is Thunderbird. The top half is Discord. That's it. <laughs> Each to their... I tried Geary, which is, like, but all the modern email clients are like, man, wouldn't it be really dope? Don't worry, kids. We're going to get to gaming. We're being old men real quick. Um, <laughs> wouldn't it be really dope if you could have that Android app experience on the desktop? I'm like, no, that'd be horrible. Like, here's Gary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that'd be neat if I had a touch screen and I wanted to use a touch screen instead of a pointing device on a computer. Pedro Mateus, what is, um, what is new with you? You've had to have done something, at least one thing this week that was kind of exciting that... Get your blood pressure up. Give you an extra heartbeat or two. Well, uh, weather got real cold, so I learned about something else that's broken on the car. Uh, the rear window defroster, defogger, like the little painted on circuit lines. Uh -huh. The four bottom ones are broken. <laughs> and it took me a while to find the break in them because they're teeny tiny little breaks, but it's just enough that like the entire bottom half of the rear windshield doesn't get defogged which was kind of annoying so i've actually bought the um little um oh game Batron called it what was it uh, a silver based uh nail polish effectively so mm -hmm. i have it and tomorrow well, see those nails. <laughs> no <laughs> see this is different between me and you man <laughs> like, well, I bought the nail polish I'm getting some use out of this <laughs> no, that's silver based I don't want to give myself heavy metal poisoning so yeah Howard <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, no tomorrow I'll fix them I'll paint on the uh, the bits where they're missing and uh, hopefully that'll do it <laughs> alright 
Right on. I mean, so it's, it's like actually getting chilly there. Uh, yeah, it, uh, during the night, it's uh, already, there was a couple of nights that it came down to one Celsius. Ooh. So we're getting there. <laughs> it's been getting there, man. We're getting down to like nine, 10 degrees at night. I'm like, this is awesome. Driving home today is 30. At That's the end of, a bit yeah. toasty. <laughs> Had the AC on. <laughs> How about you, John? You get any new movies? We should introduce a lot of people who are like, who yeah. the absolute fuck is this? Um, Including me. Yeah. Right? I have, I'm in an existential crisis. Where am I? <laughs> Ogie's been around for a long. You know him in uh, Shot Realm Dynamic. Ogie, one of you in a Discord. Uh, John, part of our Filthy Casuals crew. We get together on Tuesdays and Fridays. He showed up. I, I think you were a straggler that Beastwick brought in, right? Yeah, kicking and screaming. You know, I was like, what is this Linux thing? I don't know. I don't, I don't like Linux. No. Yeah, he was very complimentary to the people who hang in this group. And, uh, it was, uh, it, I've stuck around for a while, so I think, I think he was pretty accurate with, with his assessment. Yeah. Now, in terms of, uh, well, it was fun of, when you started out and you're like, yeah, man, uh, so you, you guys don't really run Linux, do you? You're all secretly playing on Microsoft Windows, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't very secretly playing on Microsoft Windows, but I did, um, move over to Kubuntu, uh, KDE probably yeah. <laughs> yeah kde um probably like four five six months at this point i can't even keep track of time anymore but uh yeah i usually am on linux more than i am windows at this point you love i know it so i still much. use windows well you do but you went out and bought a steam deck though yes i <laughs> Which... did Look really at this proud beautiful of thing. Went out and got a Steam Oh, back. you got one of the rare wide ones. <laughs> He's even modded it to have RGB on the front. Yeah. 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 I, think it's a, I think it's a one of a kind. <laughs> it's, a, it's a one-off Steam Deck, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's one of the prototypes that uh, <laughs> Pierre Lou <Lou's> showed. <laughs> Gaben delivered it by hand. <laughs> one of the things we've never been able to deliver by hand is our horse. <laughs> Nay, it's not possible. Why? Because it runs Windows. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you can't deliver Windows. It's the CD. Linux, Linux. Linux. update oh, of the week. week. Hey, did it do the thing? Maybe we're not echoing like crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a client update. We need to talk about it because it's kind we of like do. the uh, all the stuff. Oh, yeah, everything. It's the big beta roundup. They usually do this every couple of months. They take all of the betas and everything that people didn't complain or said that uh, didn't work at all, and they get them all together and they release a new stable branch, which is, this one is, uh, it's still, it's not just for the desktop, it also impacts the deck, obviously, uh, and the, like, the Steam input section, that is mehusive. It is, uh... So many fixes. They've, they've they've actually been the core focus uh, over the past couple of updates. They've done a lot of Steam input stuff, including not just local um, Steam input, but also for remote um, remote play. It they've done very well, and I I for one am uh, very much looking forward to it. Hopefully, there will be a Steam controller or two in the future. <laughs> Hopefully they won't get sued for oh, having no, 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 no. We can't do that. We need steam chocks. <laughs> steam joy cons. Yeah. That, yeah I, could, I know. Yeah. No steam chocks. <laughs> Fuck off. Nintendo. no, um, <laughs> just, just, just the analog stick and nothing else. Right. But they need to be heavy. I mean, I, mean, I want to throw them at people. <laughs> you know, the steam deck <laughs> kind of is, uh, 2.0 controller in a weird in a weird way. It is, but it's the Nintendo Wii U of controllers. <laughs> that, that's very true. And you can output to a secondary uh display, so yeah. Yeah, we, we just get some tape, we put these on the side, that'll be awesome. Yeah. I got two of these. Huh? I need to sell that one in the box, man. People are paying ludicrous amounts of money. Oh yeah, no, they, they price you on eBay. Mine's never been opened. It's like NIB. 
Uh, maybe, maybe that's my retirement plan. We'll just hold on <laughs> that for another 20 years and sell it to some YouTube or whatever YouTube is. But speaking of that, there's uh, some gyro updates as well. Yeah, John, do, do you play with the uh, gyros? I, I do. I, I mean, like, I never knew, like, how how much would go into the difference between just holding the controller and holding the handheld itself and how uh, that would affect the yaw in relation to the user. I I, I was looking at all these driver update, updates, like the uh, the Bluetooth connectivity update, like, it, especially, like, on a handheld that has it, you, you don't have mouse input, so you really can refine aiming in a shooter if you're using the gyro input oh, yes. in conjunction <laughs> in conjunction with uh with uh whatever control method you use on the steam deck the pad or How the does that right play analog like stick? if you have a crippling addiction to methamphetamines <laughs> uh <laughs> it might be a little hard you <laughs> might you might you might uh you might have trouble fine tuning your oh. aim Pedro, you might have kept track of this. Did you see people getting spin bend from Counter Strike last week? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although uh, the um, if you've ever played Counter Strike to any significant degree, including back to one point six, the aim bots. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're spectating someone who's using an aim bot, their camera just looks like they're spinning all the time. So that's <laughs> usually the dead giveaway. Of course, there are the really good aimbots that don't do that, but they also have the nasty snap onto the head, which makes it very clear that no one is that accurate with the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> womp womp. Yeah, the gyro, I mean, we've talked about it on the show a couple of times, like even the Steam controller um, has a gyro in it, and I, I know Jordan's played around with it for that particular reason. Like if you're playing first-person shooter, I'm like, I have not made poor enough life choices to where I've, that's ever been a problem. But if you are somebody that, I, I played with it. That's as much as I can say about gyros. And, you know, they're doing a lot of work with the gyro stuff right now, which makes me wonder if this next story has a little more to oh, it. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Steam VR 2.0. It's out. You can go play with it. And no joke, there has been, like, the past couple of months, just an unusual amount of VR updates from Steam. Like, to the point where I'm like, I think you're working on something. I mean, to me, this can only mean one thing. And one thing only. Speaking of Steam Decks, that's right, kids. 100% we're going to be getting the Steam Deck Boy. <laughs> A handy strap for your face to slap that Steam Deck right on your head. Just slide it on in. It's just going to be like the VR Boy. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to come on a little kickstand. But... <laughs> Do you remember the first gen Oculus where you could see the individual pixels? That's what that experience would be. Uh, like. Hey, man, don't knock it. Don't knock it. Uh, <laughs> Screen door effect. But at yeah. least on the Linux side, we get Steam Runtime 3.0 and a bunch of fixes to, lo and behold, make Steam VR work with 3.0 under Linux. So I think that's a good run. I don't give a singular fuck about VR, but John, you own. <laughs> Yeah, the PSVR yeah. too. You, yeah, you were like day one. Of how, how many times have you used it? Um, we, we don't have to go into specificity <laughs> on the amount of times I okay. put it on my head. Better question then. Have you gotten <laughs> Jesus? How much was that thing? Like second remark? Uh, it's about five fifty. Yeah. Oh, five, right. <laughs> hey, have you gotten five fifty? The sun out of cost it? fallacy kicked in yet? <laughs> uh, no. Um, it just. The Horizon game was kind of, you know, short, and Gran Turismo 7 is a lot easier to play uh, without a headset than with one. <laughs> um, so, you know, after the Horizon game, it was just kind of like, there was nothing really that grabbed me. Oh, right. Uh, you couldn't play um, Half-Life Alex, could you? Yeah, like, I don't understand what, what Sony's doing in terms of licensing. If Val, if they threw enough money, if they threw enough money at Valve, Valve would certainly let them have Half Life Alex. They've I, they've run like, all I don't the sales the, out of out of Alex. Just see Gabe be like, "Bitch, we buy you." <laughs> yeah, I don't think <laughs> Valve is the big blocker there. I think that's a Sony issue because Valve have been very much anti 
locking their stuff Can you stuff imagine down getting platform? Valve to move on well, something yeah, like that? Because Valve's like, whatever, maybe. Who knows? But they would like, do it if for... you want to do it, here, here you go. Do you the, keep do saying, it. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, John. I understand, but it's also Valve. We're like, do you know how many billions of dollars we make every second? Like, do you think we're susceptible to money? Well, that's true. You're like, you're only getting this if we feel like it, maybe. Like, what, what, what are you going to do for us? Yeah, that, I mean, that's, yeah. that's very true. But I could get more <laughs> more use out of the thing. Um, Have they hacked there, the bejesus out of that thing yet? So you can use it with, like, PC or anything? Well, uh, there's a company working on Steam VR compatible drivers. Mm. Uh, so uh, it's IVRY. I'm assuming it's Ivory. Oh, man. It's they right need in- to make those drivers, like, Mac OS X only just to fuck with people. <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a USB... C device, so and I, I really don't think it would be that difficult to hook up to any computer at that point, including handhelds. So I I just don't see how Sony didn't supply drivers themselves. It's a it's a no brainer. They're already publishing PC games anyway. They, they should have just made. I mean, if I look at Made Sony, they, you know, they might later on they, after they've discontinued it. So you probably mm-hmm. get another four or five months. Um, <laughs> however, that thing, even with the cost of that, I'd be surprised if like that Sony was selling it at at or near cost. It's such a niche thing for like VR. I'm like I, I don't understand. Bitter, you have you have we have VR at home, right? Yeah, the uh, Oculus Quest Two. Which is the entry level of VR, because for 300 pounds, you get the headset and the two little... I will, I will sell you a Venn Steam Boy kit. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. The um, like native stuff that you can run on the teeny tiny little Android phone that's on the headset, that, that's fine. The moment you try to use ALVR or anything to try and get that talking to Linux and Steam VR specifically, it's terrible. That bad. I seriously, full kudos to everyone who's working to make that even work as well as it yeah. does currently on Linux. But it is bad. I wish someone would make something like that affordable, but with proper Linux support. And Meta could totally have proper Linux support for that thing, but they just can't be asked. Why, why do you get to throw so for, like, you, the affordable <laughs> one? This is like you can pick three things, man. Come on. <laughs> Well, I'm, I don't know, I'm greedy. (laughs) (laughs) Unicorn device. Uh, Steam sale. Oh, yes. I don't know if you guys know, but it's spooky season, everybody. (gasps) Yeah. That's why I'm wearing a shirt with skulls on it. (laughs) That did scare the crap out of me when I saw you. And I have a skull behind me. Mm -hmm. Holding track. Obey Frank. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So... Uh, from October 26th to November 2nd, we got the Steam Scream sale, guys. Yay! Hey, all the <laughs> games that Fuck I you, don't want to play. <laughs> oh, let's go see what I'm the VR games bitch. are. All right, hang on. Let's, <laughs> hang on. Not even joking. Um, Phantasmophobia? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Forest. That... No. <laughs> Devour. <laughs> Uh, five nights at Freddy's. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I think we, we laugh, but that movie just made like 50 mil on the opening weekend. D- did it really? Of yeah. it did, children. Oh my God. <sighs> okay, here's another issue I'm going to take with like the, this is all the same game. <laughs> yes. Like, no, nobody's getting creative with like, okay, we need a VR game. Okay, floaty hands, check. Um, yeah. I'm not seeing anything, and I'm like, oh, that looks neat. And, you know, where, do, where does VR get neat with me? Beat Saber, that's about it. Be- Beat Saber is definitely definitely one that everybody's played, and it's well worth it. But mm. at this point, you've played it a lot. <laughs> is Project Zomboid still in um, early access? Yes. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> All right. Undisputed champion of early access. Uh, Project Zomboy, 33% off Resident Evil 4 remake, $39.95. Um, God by Daylight, seven bucks. That's not a bad. Strange Brigade's actually kind of fun for two for two fifty, not true fitty. 95% off. Yeah. That's a rare sale. Yeah. That 95% off is like, yeah, I'll pick that up. That's what I'm looking yeah. for during these sales. 
what I'm not looking at, Hollow Knight, seven bucks. If you like Metroidvanias, do yourself a favor, grab that. Um, yeah, I'm always looking for, you know, something like 75, 80, what I'm not looking for. It's 20% off. Last of Us. <laughs> Speaking of Sony. Um, <laughs> no. I, I'm not I'm Sony. We're, we're not by that game. Still got mixed reviews because it's it's still a dumpster fire. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I. Well, the one that I was kind of curious about was the new Amnesia, the bunker, because hey, I like horror games and I like roguelikes. So why not? Why wouldn't I like a game that's very much those two genres? Oh, yeah, right. You have the unkillable thing that doesn't let you explore as much as you want, and you have limited resources, and you have limited ability to save. I'm sorry, I don't play video games to be stressed. Even if I'm playing a horror game, it's because I want, you know, the game to try and make me feel something other than stress or boredom. That's why you play the Souls like. <laughs> I play that for the challenge, yes. <laughs> I'm it just curious, stress man. Me I, don't, out. <laughs> I don't know how stress works with some people. I'm like, uh, I don't get stressed out from playing. For the all I know, you're just playing Dark Souls with a throbbing erection, man. Listen, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm playing it with As my a throbbing erection. <laughs> That's why I got this little VR helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just waiting uh, for the drivers. Have fun with yeah, that. It's guy. the other definition of uh, face fucking. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I very much, I play video games for the sake of the escapism. So, uh, yeah, I, I very much enjoyed Soma. I very much enjoyed, um, Amnesia Dark Descent. Those were genuinely nice horror games. The bunker is just annoying. I, I, I've seen people play it and say, no, can, can, can we not? Johnny, have you been looking for anything a little more anxiety inducing? <laughs> yeah, well, they, all three fear games are in a nice little bundle for less than ten dollars, and that's a that's pretty really freaking great deal. The I like I said, I'm a big baby when it comes to horror films and games. Like uh, anything that like jumps out at you, like give me tension all day long. I'm fine with tension, but like spooky, ghosty things. I'm terrible. The fear, the first person ghost, uh, <laughs> ghost, uh, uh, infested shooter. Uh, they're really, really great games. And, you know, it's something, it's something to say when you're really, really afraid of scary stuff and you're still willing to play the game. And I really do like the fear games. They're classics. They're old, obviously. But I really, I really do want it because I've only had, I've only played the first, the first one, but for 10 bucks to get the other two with all the content, I'm definitely, definitely down for that. Although I am a big baby, like I said. <laughs> oh man. Unfortunately, there is not a sale for the most terrifying game released this week. The one well, that... it did just get released. Yeah, also, it's published by Konami. <laughs> I'm talking about City Skylines 2, Pedro. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Super uh, Mario Brothers. No, <laughs> the true horror game. <laughs> the game that has scared PC gamers wondering why they're 4090 and not run it at 1440p <laughs> above 30. The horror. I mean, addicts. But I People really like their city building, man. <laughs> we have our share of people who very much enjoyed the first uh, city skylines. On our Discord channel, watching the show live right now. I was chatting with a dude, and he's like, man, I don't understand the sports ball games, right? And he's like, every year, you just get what, you just get an update with the roster and all that? And I mean, he's like, I get it, but I wouldn't buy it. And I was like, Pokemon. <laughs> just, oh, now you get it, right. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's do a pallet swap. Right, <laughs> like rosters to play. Yeah, it's not dissimilar to a sports game, Brad. Not really. Not, <laughs> you don't really have to put much of a lens on that, but you might with um, Konami, everybody's favorite game publisher. Oh, oh yes, uh, absolutely. That them and Ubisoft. Everyone loves Konami. Um, I got distracted by Mir posting the uh, City Skylines screenshot of his Steam library over a thousand hours in it. 
But yes, apparently the uh, the new uh, Metal Gear Solid Collection games one, two, and three uh, have been released. It's only volume one. They say that they they may release other volumes with the rest of the games and the spinoffs, uh, which everyone seems to be very much looking forward to. Problem. On the Steam Deck, only the first Metal Gear Solid uh, from the collection works. Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, and 3, Snake Eater, do not launch at all. Apparently, they just crash as soon as you try to launch them. Now, I've seen people um, play uh, the game, mostly Windows users, uh, and it, it it's the console version. They're using some kind of emulation to play the original console version, because if they were using... Even the first, um, the PC port for the first game, it actually uh, scales properly uh, with the resolution. So if you, um, I, I think there's a mod that you can have like up to 4K or 8K and it, the, the resolution in the engine actually scales properly. The one that they release as a part of the Master Collection does not. Which, yeah, that it's always going to look very, very PlayStation E era, which is unfortunate. And there's um, there's performance issues besides all the games being locked at 30 FPS. There, I said <laughs> uh, it's uh, the people have been having actual performance issues trying to get the game to run properly, which is unfortunate. So thanks, Konami. You fucked it up again. How dare. <laughs> Out there, <laughs> we, we got to go check out some of the reviews on this. Um, currently, you know what? Only 500 reviews, so this is not exactly uh going to be on the top 10 list. Mm, yeah. No, especially at 20 bucks. Uh, let's see what people are willing to put up with. There's got to be some positive ones. This is exactly what I expected. I don't get why people thought this would be more than just a port 10 10. I beat the game in one sitting. That's what I'm looking for in a $20 game. Get fucked. Um, ignore all the, the negative. Thing, it's not even a port. It's just the emulated version. <laughs> Pedro, those kids would be very angry if they could read. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, I, I don't know. Like, the fuck did you expect from Konami people? Like, at what point were you like, oh, maybe this time? Yeah. <laughs> maybe. They, they they fucked up the um, Silent Hill re-releases back in the day, so this was the writing was on the wall. So it sounds like you should have just bought an Asus ROG Steam Deck. Probably. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they do boot. <laughs> they do boot on my Steam Deck, ladies and gentlemen. All right. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't understand like uh, how these publishers get away with this. Um, you you would think. With with a franchise as big as Metal Gear Solid, that uh, I don't know, you spend money, and you <laughs> you actually put a team together that like goes through the game and upgrades it. For now, happen. you know, uh, it reminds me of uh, Take Two getting uh, the GTA trilogy, and the port was an upgrade of the mobile versions. Of the game, and they used a, an AI to upscale the textures, and it was a mess. It was an absolute Things mess. that were like uh, supposed the to donut. be hexagonal <laughs> turned yeah. into a donut. <laughs> oh, and rain was just a weird texture that didn't look right, so it just like yep. appeared in the foreground. <laughs> hey, man. This- no, can, uh, Konami's a small independent startup. They, sometimes they got to farm out to Fiverr. <laughs> the well, yeah. yeah. And those pachinko machines aren't going to pay for themselves. That's at least, <laughs> at least these are available a la carte, as well as in a group, mm-hmm. so you can pay twenty bucks for MGS One and it'll work on your Steam Deck. But if you want to, if you want to get the other two working, there there has been a fix that users have found, where if you, at your own risk, install uh, grab a audio DLL file from the Windows version. You can try at your own risk to get it up and running. Well, there's no really like, risk, man. Like, it's either well, I mean, DLL.net. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, risk in terms of doing oh, it you, correctly. Patrick, go to sketchydll.cx.ru. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you go to the pro website, right? right. <laughs> Got a subscription. 
<laughs> at least before uh you know valve fixes it because you know konami isn't it isn't going to fix it no that's the difference last week we were talking about capcom um fixing things before releasing like hey we're gonna make sure our games work on steam deck and we got konami over here chomping on glue stick like give us money <laughs> <laughs> uh, their game people you like that game right these Money. fuckers will buy it they <laughs> they got a marker in their nose and they're chopping on the glue i'm just saying man cannot cut <laughs> people are going to keep paying so they're going to keep uh, releasing busted stuff you know God what damn it that's gonna do it for the news konami you know what did a better job on metal gear than uh valve did on the 70 percent off <laughs> Oh, so it's not just on my screen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, all, we all get a high action adventure with Kung Fu Grip. A um, <laughs> couple of game updates this week. Anodyne, who remembers this, man? For some reason, the only thing that I remember about this game was it was using Adobe Air. And this is one of the Hubble bundles. Yeah, right. <laughs> Check your library. You probably have a copy of this, but just kind of out of nowhere, man. Big, chonking, hawking update. New 60 FPS mode, boss, boss rush mode has been added. And you don't have to worry about it because, you know, don't, don't clutch your um, pixels because the original version is still there for those of you <laughs> that want to run out and play it. Uh, I know I've played this, but that's as far as my story goes because this thing came out in 2013, mm-hmm. like right when we were getting started with the show. You know, back when things like Adobe Air existed. <laughs> That's the thing. By 2013, Adobe Air had already been uh, discontinued on Linux in 2011 <laughs> specifically, and that was 12 years ago. Uh, so Wait, now I absolutely what Anodyne two what? <laughs> yes, there we, is an Anodyne. We just two. went 3D. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, they. I very much approve of devs actually going back to games that they release and preserving their own creations. Absolutely. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love the community effort that goes around preserving a video game, especially Adobe Air games, because that was, even back then, that was a shit show oh, to get damn. working properly. This thing's <laughs> old enough to where it non-ironically has Windows XP listed as the recommended, um... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And just to let you know, it's not a GP with ends up game, bro. <laughs> I played that That's on, good additional uh, information. on that book. <laughs> It is currently yeah. off, uh, like what, seventy percent off in the spoopy sale. You can get it for mm-hmm. your box. Like if you haven't played yeah, it, three bucks. Yeah, you like those yeah, Zelda I'm... games, don't you? Yeah, I mean, wouldn't this be better if the... like your weapons broke for no reason? Yeah. Oh yeah, Breath of the Wild, sure. Yeah. Well, you know, Link to the Past, more more like this game. Uh, you know, I grew up on the NES and the Super NES. I didn't have a computer until. Yeah, I was a I you know, a little bit older. I had the NES. I also had Zelda too, the best one. Zelda two, side scrolling Zelda. But uh <laughs> yeah, I mean I this reminds me of, you know, Sea of Stars is another re- recent game that uh it's kind of in that style, but the sixteen bit SNES style. It was making slapping noises. Uh that was me, I'm sorry. Uh <laughs> I put my hand down. Uh, the, the 16-bit SNES style, uh, Zelda, uh, you know, that isometric the perspective that we all got used to in that era, uh, it just feels warm and cozy. You know, I remember playing Final Fantasy, uh, 3, 6 in Japan, you know, when I was younger, love, I just love that art style. It's fun. It makes me think of uh, I remember playing better that. times. Yeah, it is. <laughs> just like we used to play it back in the day on the NES. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's exactly what I remember. <laughs> Zelda in the Doom Engine. Completely remade. <laughs> dungeon for Dungeon, man. If you, want, if you want the best Doom mod, go ahead and grab this. Spend some time with it. That one and uh, the, uh, the serial Castlevania one? one. I watched um, Mac, Maximilian Dude or Dude or whatever. That guy on Twitch and, uh, you know, budget Pedro. Um, <laughs> that or I'm the Pedro with a bad guy job. Um, <laughs> he went through playing this for the first time and I'd never played through the original Zelda and just like some of the convoluted nonsense in that game that you would have to know was just giving me like Nintendo power flashbacks or like those books that you had to buy to beat games. Who remembers those? Like the walkthrough guides that were required to get through parts of games zelda 2 temple there was no way you could have figured that out 
Not at all. Action <laughs> I'm RPGs. Sure it made sense to someone during development. <laughs> I don't know, John. I, I think my love for ARPGs is uh, it's going to be 3D these days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, you can't. You can't. Can't do that isometric. Uh, overhead view anymore never been a huge fan of that like give me a side scroller metroidvania rpg like a uh, uh, hollow knight ori Ori's is a good one give me something like that tell me a little bit of story let me jump around but um yeah like the overhead type no what was the like last thing that was kind of fun like hyperlight drifter that was all right feel free to well, throw in at any time well, I mean, is... <laughs> here's the thing uh i can't say anything about the isometrics because my all-time favorite game is fallout 2 isometric i play the yeah. shit ton of diablo 2 uh isometric uh torchlight obviously isometric uh baldur's gate isometric uh, <laughs> it's uh yeah no i we, uh like um ogi was saying like uh, he likes that um 2d um style of the early Zelda games I very much prefer like the Fallout uh, and the Planescape Torment and the Icewind Dale and the Baldur's Gate and all of that. See, I grew up playing that shit on PC before I got a NES. That's <laughs> way I, different than me. Yeah, I, I'm like, you know, I, I had a computer back and like, like that NES showed up. Like that's a cool toy. Um, but <laughs> this is what you play, this is what you get a console for though: side scrollers. Yeah, because we really didn't have side scrollers. On PC, they were worth a damn. They were like screen scrollers. Like, well, oh, the Apogee ones, Commander Keen. Screen scrollers until much later. Like, you went to the next screen and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> this Mario thing, you just keep running. Like, that was a big deal back then. And you're like, what? It was Keen 3 or 2. I think um, it was 3 that, hit, that did the continuous scroll. <laughs> Carmack figured out a way to do scrolling. Yes. Uh, he even put together a demo of the uh, original Mario game, and he sent it to Nintendo, and Nintendo probably, fortunately, just didn't sue him. <laughs> they just sent back a letter to say, no. Right. <laughs> oh. You not? gotta love John Carmack. Carmack is an uh, inter- interesting guy. Everyone kind of does. <laughs> What do we get up next? Speaking of Diablo, right? Speaking of isometric, yes, you get a whole new perspective on the Halloween <laughs> update. You skipped the story. Um, uh, there's the uh, the tanks story comes first in the notes. Oh, all right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. The Halloween update is uh, Wii Tanks version one point zero point eight. Which is the you other can blame Pedro, game of That's tanks. why we're staring at a pimp pumpkin. It's out of my control mm-hmm. now. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's so spoopy. Uh, the uh, the new there's a new survival map where you basically just uh, have to try and get to the other side of the map without dying. And there's a bunch of um, hazards that you have to survive. Uh, there is a bit of a Halloween theme, obviously, but there it's only going to be for the festivities all right let's be honest we're talking about a perspective change right yes that they slightly lowered the camera angle would you have noticed if they hadn't brought it up (laughs) i mean probably not i'm not gonna lie to you man i would have if we would have played that i'd be like oh they changed the camera like where (laughs) you can see like the top of the map you can see slightly more detail of the stuff that gets cut off that's that's months of development by the way Ben. i don't know what you're talking about They've also introduced some uh, post-processing effects. You can see that there's like, um, what's the and thing that obscures where two models meet? Ambient alcohol. occlusion. Occlusion, <laughs> yeah, occlusion. So yeah, no, uh, they I- introduced ambient occlusion and some other bits of um, post-processing to make the visuals a little bit better. It is an update. It's very good. Uh, I I still wish they unlocked first-person mode without me having to play through the story mode. Please, no, pretty god, please. You know what? We <laughs> we have the ability to do it now. Oh, we do. Because I, gar- I guarantee you, you've not played any more of this game than I have. No. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Last update, last update was, um, I had to look into it, uh, the ability to enable first person tech mode, which is all, all uh, the entire time we played this was like, wait a minute, that's a thing. That's what we want to play because it's like, you know, battle takes from back in the day. You have to complete the most wanted achievement. That was in 
two months ago, the most recent update, which apparently we've unlocked. Uh, I think it's one of those like, (laughs) here's a free achievement for what? Mm -hmm. Here's another one. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Do you like 10 games, John? Uh, That's a pretty fun. I I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a fun little game. I think it's, it's, there, there are times when developers look at things and just uh, overthink things. Like in the pause menu here, they said they updated uh, they changed the tanks left text in the pause menu to lives. It, it's a it's a tank game, guys. I think we can figure out. I think you what fucking tanks- say that, but I also guarantee you <laughs> that is in response to somebody leaving a negative review. Oh yeah, uh, was was there an unplayable? Outcry, I mean, the tanks are alive, you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, very good. I didn't even think of that aspect of it. We're causing death now. You know? Before it was just tanks. It was just tanks. We didn't know if there were little lives inside. It's a fun and little now, game. We, we gotta do. put this game through like the right lens too, because it's also available on the um the Nintendo thing. The Switch. The Switch, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh. Probably got a bunch of people playing. I am assuming it doesn't have crossplay. No. Isn't that uh, right, Mr. Handy Desk? <laughs> <laughs> Now can we talk about the last deep book? Yes, n- n- now we can. One point oh, the last it's a point release. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take it away. Oh, last deep book coming out February twenty first, twenty twenty four. Out of out of early access. This is my kind of game. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Baldur's Gate three comes out of early access. This comes out of early access. Next, next up, Star Citizen, full release. <laughs> <laughs> Full release, guys. It's coming. I'm telling you, 2024 is our year. Well, didn't Squadron 42 ship this week? Yeah, Squadron. Did they actually release it? Or it's did they it's, just it's, it's actually it? it's content complete now. It actually is. All right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what they're claiming. That's what they're mm-hmm. claiming. I I don't know if it's shipped, but it's it, they said it's content complete. But I think yeah, there might not be a date yet. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Five years yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all joking aside, I haven't played an action RPG like this in a while. You know, it's you know, it's a, it's not particularly my cup of tea. Like, uh, seems like it's more Pedro's in a long time. But yeah, I like to oh, jump yes. back in. It looks pretty good. <laughs> I like the idea I and mean, hunting, looting, slashy. You know, it's like Victor Friend type stuff. But Pedro, I know if I scroll down, it's gonna make me sad on that bottom <laughs> in the right hand corner where it has a uh, players, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, it is. Is it da, 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 single play? Oh no, it's got online. No, co-op. it's online. Yeah, Shut you your whole mouth, Pedro Matthias. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it's a uh, Diablo likes as you know them. It is uh, this one has had a native Linux version for a while now. Uh, admittedly, I was only made aware of it because one Scott Michaud, uh that likes to hang around in our Discord mm-hmm. uh, mentioned. On Discord, it's like, oh, yeah, I did some work for these guys, and the game has a native Linux version. Oh, so it does. So I bought it. Uh, the price has gone up over the years. <laughs> it was cheaper when I bought it, but uh, yeah, it is. Um, I can finally think about playing it properly. I, I think I put in just under 10 hours, according to Steam. So yeah, no, I, I, I enjoyed what I played. I played the uh, the big swords dude because i like the big sword it's either the big sword dude or the mage type uh character and yes you do have uh paid items if you'd uh, like to. <laughs> 168 dollars worth pedro mm-hmm. and just, uh, some of those are repeatable so you can keep oh, yeah, I, yeah I, I mean if you're like small potatoes i can blow more money than that on a game i'm like oh here's your chance uh yeah that, we would definitely call it covered this before but like that that's bullshit for a thirty-four dollar game. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know what? It, people are playing it. It's got positive. People like it. So yeah, uh, but microtransactions during early access is, in my opinion, is a big no-no. Yeah, you, and, you really can't be. Oh yes, I guess. <laughs> well, you you know what I mean. <laughs> they will, but they shouldn't be. 
Oh man, uh, gameplay is great, uh, but it runs like utter ass. I you meant to put that on the City Skylines review. Sorry, you had the wrong page <laughs> open. Um, <laughs> better than D four. Oh, I got this. We well, got Diablo the... four is on Steam now. So yeah, uh... <laughs> I'm fair. I mean, the type of people who eat these games up seem to like it. So I mean, that that's mm-hmm. good. And they got like ninety hours, sixty hours. It's that type of game. So I'm gonna say good on them. Like, and nobody's forcing you to buy. DLC and content like that, or the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, uh, yes. There is online co-op, but the the bulk of the experience is how many tokens do I need to buy? It, none, <laughs> 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 because it's all single player, and the story is interesting. Because they could have done that with Dark Souls, Pedro. I would have paid money <laughs> for an easier way to play online in Dark Souls. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the easy mode yeah. DLC. Yeah. <laughs> like just like let me just have a lobby where I can click. I'm like all right, done. Yeah, no, I, that is that is a the jumping through hoops that I very much. Agree. I fully believe they spent an entire week seeing how convoluted they can make that. Like they workshopped it. As, yeah, it, it's it, it's the like the drop in drop out experience because they very much want at least according to Miyazaki, it was like they don't want to make a co op game out of the Soul series. They just wanted to have okay, you need help for this one section. You summon the person for this one section. That's it. And then the person drops off and you continue on your merry way. And they never accounted for the fact, okay, but what if I want to co-op? What if I want to have someone with me the whole then time? you can get or- wrecked. We're just going to disable <laughs> online multiplayer for a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and leave people questioning. It's like, is it ever going to come back on? Don't worry. Our radio <laughs> silence spoke volumes. Uh, yeah, no, that was okay. Admittedly, the uh, the fault that they found was bad because you could effectively just run malware off of the Dark Souls <laughs> multiplayer just by invading someone else's world. So it was going online during that time was effectively playing Russian roulette with am I going to get invaded and am I going to get malware on my computer? Oops. <laughs> I mean, what's the worst yeah, scenario? Way you got to wipe the proton prefix. Uh, yeah, no, for Linux users, uh, yeah. Hey, Pedro. <laughs> At most, you would have had to remove Fuck the em. Proton prefix. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, there were people, uh, there were streamers that had that happen live. It's like, oh, <laughs> good times. <laughs> All right, everybody. That's going to do it for the steamy stuff. Let's talk about the newsy things because this kind of came out of nowhere to the surprise of some from Reuters. All this is going to be in our show notes. Go check that out, LinuxThemeGas.com. NVIDIA to make ARM-based PC chips and a major new challenge to Intel, which those of you who just don't keep track of this kind of stuff, for a hot minute there, I would stab that up. <laughs> they in, took the Windows key out of a keyboard and put, put it on, it on a motherboard. A motherboard. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They also didn't dust that damn capacitor. That bug, like, hit the thing with the air gun for one second. Damn. <laughs> So, yeah, no joke, this is not a repeat from 2010. NVIDIA is going to be making CPUs that can, according to this article, run the Windows. So, like, I'm, you have to assume it's there, you know, Windows ARM exists. But I'm assuming, you know, NVIDIA is going to do some stuff like Apple's been doing with the M-Series to add some x86 emulation acceleration in the silicon itself to help out with the x86 stuff. My big question is, which I already know the answer to, but I want to fantasize a little bit, um is if we're going to get like a discrete CPUs where we can plop those into motherboards like we currently do, you know, and have like different options, or if it's going to end up being another system on the chip, a la like the M series where like you, when do you make your how much memory you want decision when you buy it? Why? Because that's the only time you get to make that decision. <laughs> and here's the thing. You got to be sitting there. If AMD is probably like, fuck it, we're still alive. All right. They're not even worried about this. <laughs> Intel, on the other hand, had a strong push to try to do an ARM. Whole ARM thing, man. I know, deep in the technical details I'm getting there, but I'm summarizing for podcasts. Deal with it. <laughs> and they just completely fucked off with it. So did AMD. AMD had a mobile ARM division. Like, we're going to be doing this low power type stuff, getting mobile devices, and they fucked off with it too. So, uh, Really, this is the only place outside of AI and compute. This is the only place NVIDIA can go right now. 
Like we gotta bring it to the desktop. Yeah. <laughs> and uh they've they've clearly been wanting to do something like this for years. Uh I mean they tried to buy ARM, remember that? <laughs> what I just got done talking about. I know you don't pay me attention, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that's the thing. They tried to buy the the people developing the um architecture. So yeah, as a user of the shield, if you remember it, uh, or the shield, not this one, the one that came after it, uh, or the shield, the one that came before it, or the shield, the one that is currently still supported to this day. NVIDIA naming schemes. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, no, the, like the, the shield tablet, it had a Kepler GPU and I used that tablet basically until it became too slow until to it run didn't modern. Blow up. Yeah, until it didn't blow up. This is uh, this is the the one that was supposedly recalled because uh, the battery might blow up at some point. Gave it to Nori. <laughs> no, no, I kept the, I kept the exploding one to myself, and I gave that's right. The, you did, <laughs> and I gave Nori the brand new one that they sent me because yes, there was a recall, and you didn't have to give it back. They were just going to remotely disable it. At which point, I said, "Oh, all right." install uh, at the time cyanogen mod on it <laughs> but yeah it is i they have way too powerful a graphics solution already for it not to be an soc they're just going to have everything in the one package and having that fourth option okay you don't want to go intel you don't want to go amd and you certainly don't want to go with apple does nvidia make anything interesting well, yes very yes well i want an nvidia cpu <laughs> for my intel gpu yeah. I want to short circuit some people out there on the internet. <laughs> you know, I mean, they did, they did have the Enforce, um, the Enforce chipset. I had one of those. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> but you know, they, but people don't talk about them because it's not really in our sphere. I do follow it a little more than I should. Nvidia has been making SOC like the Jetson Nano series, which are like Raspberry Pis on methamphetamine mm -hmm. um, for AI accelerated learning. I really, the, and I understand why you'd want to do the SOC with memory and all that. That's one of them. I want like a big, crazy, high powered ARM, be it ARM or RISC V uh, device that, again, you got three options, unfortunately, is affordable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you going to rush out and buy um, NVIDIA CPUs, Hoagie? No. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> Uh, oh, what I if they just I, made them socket compatible to fuck with Intel and AMD? That would be interesting. I, I don't think they are. I think they're going to do more uh, just compete in laptops and portables, in my opinion, at least for the moment. And, you know, the power efficiency is right now Apple's domain. And, you know, Qualcomm is also jumping in with the Snapdragon, but NVIDIA wants to get in on this with Windows. And I think a follow-up to the Shield, uh, you know, um, an SOC is very much on the table. And NVIDIA is, NVIDIA is um, Nintendo's partner for the Switch, and that Switch 2 is coming. There and is, I, but NVIDIA, like, NVIDIA knows how to make the low-powered type shit. I mean, they've known how to do that, which you just said. We, we got the Shield, and they've been making, yeah. you know, the Switch. NVIDIA wouldn't there wouldn't be hub bubba if NVIDIA is just making more of the same. Well, I mean, maybe R and D went into the switch that also this coalesces into nah. this. <laughs> this is gonna be server class shit. This Guaranteed. is the R and D yeah, for think, the switch you think, right you here. You don't think it's gonna be <laughs> laptops portables? You think it's more server? Oh, I, I'm sure they're gonna have nerf down little versions. Yeah. It, it, for for this, you gotta look at a, you know a, a a company like NVIDIA wasn't doing everything in its power to buy arm the creators of the technology That's to true. make some more switches <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, sometimes i live in my own little bubble hey man i'm here to crush dreams hashtag lgc cares <laughs> well you know dreams aren't Pedro, yet. would you anything uh, microsoft has been trying to go arm for a long time all the way back i mean yes. way way back but like i, I think their first like public a lot of people were exposed to it. Okay, a lot of them, like 13 people who got the Windows RT tablets and like, this doesn't run anything. Mm -hmm. 
There's a version and, of Windows 10 that runs on a Raspberry Pi. Yes, and well, then they did the ARM laptop, like, what, two years ago? That was a uh, talk slow. But now Samsung's got a new ARM. That's tablet. the thing. That, that, because all of, for all of, I don't know, how many years have we had, uh, uh, like, ARM mobile phones with the exact same Qualcomm or MediaTek um, A76. SOCs? Yeah, and okay, those are great for phones and tablets, some, <laughs> because uh, the moment you need any kind of performance, they're really not there, or they just suck so much battery life that they become completely unusable as a mobile device that needs to be away from the wall for a while. But they so, like the weird things, like there's a, what is it, the N100s from Intel that are just all P cores? Yes. That that's the thing. Like Apple proved that yes, you can have a high power, high performance type of um, ARM SOC, and it can as long as you pair it with big enough a battery, uh, you can make it as the right wheels. And yes, <laughs> the five thousand dollar wheels. Yes, <laughs> I forgot about those. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, they proved that, yes, uh, for the stupid pricing, um, you can have a very powerful ARM thing. So if NVIDIA is going to just, you know, crib Apple's notes, make it powerful. M put your GPU architecture in an ARM SOC and make everyone else, make Qualcomm, make Samsung, make MediaTek, make them all cry because you did the, the, the good thing. <laughs> you say that, but I don't think that's what they're doing. I think. Probably. NVIDIA is legitimately coming after AMD and Intel with us. They, they want that server space, man. Like, that's where the money is. It's like the, it's the density. Like what you can prac in with power efficiency. You know, if you can get mm -hmm. like a one U rack that can do X amount of teraflops over whatever, you know, exascale unit meter feet within that power envelope and how many you can stack. I, I think that's where they're going for. I'm just hoping for some trickle down. Goodies. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want. Talking to a guy who wants to build an epic desktop. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of who's been winning the uh, server uh, competition uh, over the past couple of years. Yeah, it's amazing if you give people price performance options, right? It's got quite a bit. Yeah. Because <laughs> Intel's been dropping the ball a little bit on the efficiency side of things. It has been fascinating <laughs> to watch Intel try to recover from stagnation. Of being mm -hmm. a decade of having no competition and then to see the scrambling while on top of that doing a, another attempt at consumer GPUs. Yeah, which is weird. <laughs> please keep going with that these, latter one Intel, please. These 14th please. gen <laughs> CPUs seem to be the 13th gen CPUs. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> if you watch the, uh, what was it, uh, yeah. Gamers Nexus? Mm -hmm. that, it's like, oh. Uh, it's the exact same one. There's like a one, uh, one to seven percent performance difference mm -hmm. in yeah. all of the tests. It's like ah, but they're not reacting like a company that has the type of competition that they have. I, I, I think they're trying, but I mean, what was it? What was it? Coffee Lake that had like the different pin that got like the one generation, and then like they just introduced a new socket, and we're like, what? That this just came out like, wait, well, we had to move a pin around. It's like a power pin or something like that. We forget. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, was that 11th gen or 12th I gen? I don't remember. It was one of them. <laughs> no, let's be perfectly fucking clear. AMD's no better with that type of shit. Like when you look at the Threadripper series, I'm very intimately familiar with that as somebody with this show brought to you by AMD Threadripper. Gen 1, get fucked. Um, because <laughs> I got the Gen 1, I'm like, oh, cool, Gen 2, that's awesome. And they're like, hey guys, you know, we're, Gonna have to change the socket for the new uh, 3000 series thread uppers. I'm like, fine, fine, maybe I'll get one of those. They made one chip for that, and they're like, so we're not gonna make thread rippers anymore, but we got this pro series that's twice as much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then I'm like, yeah. you know what, maybe I'll get a thread ripper pro, and thread ripper pro came out. Not Are you not. saying corporations can't be trusted then? I'm not done, <laughs> I'm not done yet. Thread ripper pro came out. Super expensive. Now AMD's coming back to the table, everybody. They're like, all right, hear us out. We're not going to make any updates to the Threadripper Pro either. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we understand you just bought a thousand dollar motherboard, but a three thousand dollar CPU. But here, so we're gonna make some more thread rippers, and this time, like, probably gonna do the same thing. <laughs> Get fucked, AMD on that one. Like, I don't know who is gonna buy a thread ripper because you remember the original thread rippers? I still have that motherboard box. They were like, oh, it's the gaming extreme RGB. Like, they mm-hmm. roll some dice on that. Um. I don't know. Anybody like me? Like, if you look at the landscape and you're just completely oblivious, what are you going to do? You're going to build an epic system. Why? Because you can get 7,001, 7,002, 7,003 motherboards. And guess what? AMD don't pull that bullshit on Enterprise. Socket compatible, baby. Oh, you want to upgrade from PCI 3 to 4? Yeah, BIOS update. (laughs) Done. Yeah. Different story. So anyway, I want some competition. I don't care where it comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Would and, be nice yeah. if uh, And you know what? I, I hope you get super, <laughs> super powerful. Because uh, we were joking about that. Uh, the Switch 2s. Yeah. I, I, I hope. I hope I'm the, telling uh, you that APU like, is going to make man, Julian it's gonna, fries. It's going to fuck your PC up, man. Oh, God. I hate We're going to have the teraflops discussion again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's not going to be very powerful, but it is going to leverage DLSS. It's going I'm to be sure. way more powerful than eight-year-old mobile phone hardware that it's currently running. <laughs> well, true. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe it, it would be power comparable to like a PS4 Pro. Hopefully, I would hope. You know, I mean that's not out of the realm of possibility. Well, and then with DLSS. You know, you could you could actually leverage a technology to have at least Nintendo try and visually compete. Yeah, they they basically have the free performance button, so they're gonna use it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's it's a good thing I got it because I lapped in ray tracing. <laughs> okay, moral of the story: um, there is none to that. Like whoever wins, like any, anything that's gonna shake up anything. You know, this is why I'm a huge fan of Intel making GPUs right now, even though they're not much of a threat yet. But NVIDIA making CPUs might not be a threat for a while. But just having that third player, it's been a while. It's been a minute since we've had a Cyrex or VIA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mean, VIA, go back to making X86 compatibles. Come on. This is what I'm saying, man. Because <laughs> they're not going to give anybody a perpetual X86 license. Intel's not. I mean, it's them and AMD. We've, most of you listening to the show have never known anything different than X86. You did not grow up with a Cyrex. You did not grow up with a VIA. And like, you had options. You didn't just, wasn't these two companies. So going to risk five and arm has a, the chance of bringing that back. I'd like to see unity. Oh yes. <laughs> Lovely unity. Turns out it was money. Who thought? Yep. <laughs> this comes from Ars Technica. Why unity felt the need to rush out. It's controversial. Install fee program money. But look, there's a bunch of words that if you scroll down, you get to the end, and you're like, yeah, it's muddy at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but there's 144 comments. We're like, yeah, it's muddy. Uh, what do they start with this? Uh, it was all about the ads. And what I took away from this piece is they, they rushed it out because, you know, Unity spent a lot of money buying shit they shouldn't have bought. Like, what a digital little things and why were you doing this money was flowing man interest rates were cheap that kind of dried up and they needed a revenue stream turns out app loving app loving was what most mobile developers and the likes were using for their ad integration and i had to look that up i don't know what the hell an app loving i'm still not 100 percent on it <laughs> and unity wanted to like hey kind of push their own thing so they they kind of basically just threatened everybody with this that was that's what the push that's what the article's conveying here was because that was a clause in it. Like, hey, you know what? We're not going to take your revenue cut from your upcoming games and previous games if you switch over to our ad system, right, Bandro? Mm-hmm. That, that, that was very much uh, one of the key points because if people signed up to the Iron Source um, co developed one because they bought Iron Source, uh, merged, 20- merged with. Yes, merged uh, in 2021 or 2022, something like that. And 
obviously, then if you have the competitor and you have a bunch of Android developers saying, oh, uh, if you're uh, going to start pushing Iron Source and getting us to move away from Apple Oven, we're just not going to use your engine anymore. So they rushed out the update that said, okay, then you're going to start paying for every single install. <laughs> it was literally pettiness of trying to get money off of uh it was trying to eliminate options the market. Yeah. Just, like, <laughs> we're just going to remove your options where you have no other option because they never once could you know no mba in that entire chain went like what if they just switch engines he gets thrown in, he's the last frame in that comic where the guy's getting mm-hmm. thrown out of the window <laughs> that guy was like what if they just switch engines <laughs> they didn't see that coming that that might very well be what's going to happen because a lot of people have been genuinely discontent with the entire situation and i do hope that unfortunately the uh the industry gaming and mobile gaming industry seem to have very short-term memories but i hope the industry at large doesn't forget what happened anytime soon well john what's your take on this as somebody with a little more of an understanding of like revenue and finance than i think uh, oh yeah pedro and myself (laughs) yeah i mean you know, coming from, you know, just a fiscally educated point of view. Um, yeah, I mean, it's obvious to everybody. It's, it, it's, it's so short-sighted. You're biting the hand that literally feeds you. Your revenue source are the developers. Why would they trust them going forward? Why would you Lack piss? of option. Lack, oh yeah, there are no other engines around. That's it, you know? <laughs> you know, it's unity or nothing. So obviously, this feud with Apple Oven must take center stage. Um, I think they, a lot of this was pressured by we got to survive. Yeah, they were, and it, like you said, it was driven by the acquisitions. Like they so were losing lack of money. money. Yeah, like, yeah, they spent all accruing their money, a billion so. dollars in debt. <laughs> like that'll do it. Wait, a digital? Why you brought that one up? I read that and I was like. What 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 does Unity need? Yeah, you got to keep up with the kids because Epic was buying dumb shit too. Like, yeah. Yeah. your yes. friends are doing Bam it. Cam? Yeah. <laughs> Epic also has an infinite revenue source. So Unity thought they did too. <laughs> yeah, they they, they 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 thought that the uh, Fortnite was going to keep paying for every single one of their bad decisions. <laughs> it was yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's very true. And the Epic Game Store is just you know rolling over Steam. So, I mean, a- well. Epic is like as a company is like doing better than Unity because Epic has a product. Yes, it has a yes. game that can generate, and we talked about that. You know, when this first broke, like Unity attempted to make like their Fortnite game, and it just got dissolved. And it's it's not a sustainable business model. Even like Unity clearly knows that. And, like that, the end of the money's with the ads if they can get their um little Unity clause in that. Again, people, if you are currently thinking about or in the early stages of game design and you're thinking of unity i don't care what game you're doing mobile console your cross-platform you pick unity and nobody's gonna have any sympathy for you when this comes back yeah and it will come back man it, i'm gonna say it's gonna happen I mean, there's not like gonna pedro be... said the short-term memory of the industry no the the ghost of um i don't know unreal engine 2 is gonna visit them and they're <laughs> Heart's going to go three sizes. Yeah, they're going to turn around and no. Uh, it's, it, it is. They've shown what they're capable of. And John Ricciatello went, okay, I'm going to take this opportunity since I already sold all of my shares. I'm just going to fuck off right now. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> He's like, You're going to be the scapegoat. He's like, cool. Yeah. Give me some money. Yeah, pin everything on Have me. Fun. I don't mind. <laughs> I'm gonna go cry on my Golden yachts. parachute. <laughs> but maybe that would all come to the end if um you know game developers themselves could get more money. People are just pirating everything these days, Pedro. To pirate this, pirate that. Oh yeah, no. Uh it's not Thievery. like piracy is at an all time low. <laughs> Comparatively speaking, but uh, no, the uh, Entertainment Software Association, you may know them as the ESA, um, a 
basically a conglomerate of a bunch of publishers and people with money sort of related to the games industry that, uh, in an effort to try and keep government out, decided we're going to regulate ourselves. And apparently they're bored. They're bored because um, they've now come back and made a presentation to the... Yeah, uh, it's a cyber locker. <laughs> the USTR. <laughs> Oh, it's a category? Uh, oh, you're making shit up. Come on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cyber Locker as in uh, online lockers. <laughs> it's a website. Put I Locker. Uh, yeah, no, like if you remember Put Locker back in the day or nope. One Fichier or Mega mega is. Uh, n- Not that mega, but similar. Yes. Uh, the Yeah, no, they made a presentation to say that, uh, yes, uh, sites that let people upload large files like your mag is your rapid shares, if you remember them. That, that is like something we come up with on the show, unknowcheats.me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, cheat makers and crackers and repackers and hackers. Yes, they actually do say that hackers, hackers are the problem, man. It's 2023 and we're using 1996 lingo. Um, it's, it, yeah, it, the whole thing is kind of laughable if you keep in mind that companies like electronic arts ubisoft nintendo and a few others are backing the esa monetarily god damn uh, watson look at this mm-hmm. Is it, uh, <laughs> such what? insightful comments as <laughs> really malware can also are. be used to generate <laughs> revenue you don't fucking say uh, uh, electricity <laughs> shocky in other news um <laughs> It, it, like the whole thing is uh, the ESA trying to dodge responsibility on the sheer incompetence of their members, effectively. Because make no mistake, cheats are a problem which should be the responsibility of the people developing the game or the publishers if they want to get involved, not the people playing it. People pay good money for those cheats, man. Those spinning uh, yeah, Counter Strike if, if a player is cheating, it's up to the developers and the publishers. To deal with that, the way that current anti cheat I don't know. I feel that as us as a society should uh, come down with great anger and furious vengeance upon all. <laughs> uh, yes, mob mentality. Let's go. No, uh, no, but- no, no, no. We're getting the government in this. <laughs> uh, yes, Smiting vigilantism. Pedro. All right. Okay. Fuck Kill that. the beast. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, like currently the way that we, that anti-cheats like um, Easy Anti-Cheat and Battle Eye and all the others do is they treat everyone like a cheater and fuck you, we're going to run it in ring zero. That, in my opinion, is not how it should be done. If you want to actually have a proper anti-cheat, you need to control the, you need to control that server side. Uh, you need to in order to not punish legitimate players, the players who actually paid for the game and the players will likely get angry when they get wrongfully banned for something that they didn't actually do, Blizzard, and everyone trying to play um, Diablo 3 on Linux a few years ago, or Overwatch 2 a few months ago. Uh, yeah, it's this has been like a repeating thing. It's also the case with DRM, like stupidly draconian DRM. That does absolutely nothing to stop piracy and often stops legitimate purposes from being able to play the game that they pay the license for. Ubisoft, Assassin's Creed. Remember how the first three weeks that the first Assassin's Creed came out? Online only DRM. No one could play the fucking game because the servers were down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what type of uh, sandwich ESA is trying to feed everybody right now. This is what they're trying to do. This is a sales pitch. That's how it's wrapped together. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. See, they would very much like it if, uh, you know, maybe government entities kind of went after these sites that were selling uh, or just distributing pirated games. Why? Not because they're worried about the piracy. No, no, no. Uh, Not them. No, no, it's not a real thing. Reading through this, they're worried about the safety of the individuals because those games could contain malware. So they're thinking about, the, think of the thinking about the end users, Pedro. They're trying to save people from themselves. We're not worried about piracy. We're worried about, we want to protect the end users. 
I'm shedding that, a tear right now. That is a savage they're attempting to sell with us. Um, yeah, this is like think of the children, but with malware. You yeah, know, they, they it, it's dodging the responsibility. Yeah, cheats and everything <laughs> else and all that. That's just yeah. fancy talk for like, just take these damn sites down, motherfucker. It's they, they have too much time on their hands, man. You know, when was the last say, time you've downloaded? Uh, I I don't know if I've ever downloaded like what I, what I think about cheats because I know what this is really addressing is like paid cheats and they don't like mm -hmm. that because they're not getting a cut of it. Mm -hmm. Um, there's no problem with the cheats, man. We're like, but hey, um, we should begin some of that. Um, cheats or like a. The idea of like we're we're living in the torrent or the the idea of going after websites was like, you want me to laugh any harder? <laughs> like, piracy's not done through going to freepirategame.org.net. No. Like this this is, this is just silly, in my opinion. It's not going to solve anything. This is oh. literally them saying, look, we're being proactive. We're addressing the situations. We're putting the onus on the government, not us, not the actual companies making of the children, Pedro. profiting children. off of, of the video games. Yes, children. Yeah. Uh, another children. tier. <laughs> it's, it, it is like literally just sidestepping the responsibility. No, no, no. The onus is on the government now that we told them, so it's their problem now. Now take it on those websites because we're not getting any money from them. And <laughs> You know, if if you if you implement all of these measures and DRM, then how are people going to ever keep their games? Cartridges, so, Ogie. This is what we need to do. We need to bring oh, back cartridges. I forgot. Sorry, slapping the like, but I forgot. Like uh, cartridges. That's it. That's the solution. You know what? Wouldn't be that expensive for the price of flash memory these days. <laughs> Although I mean, uh, it's Nintendo fifteen bucks for one hundred twenty-eight gig SSD. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past someone like Nintendo uh, to start including that de novo DRM for consoles that they were mm -hmm. talking about. <laughs> well, that's coming to Switch, hundred percent. Well, de novo uh, DRM was a. Uh, I remember uh, affecting uh, Resident Evil games and their frame rates when they came out. Oh yeah, no, de novo has been eight. shit. For performance yeah my yeah. only encounter with de novo was when i bought devil may cry 5 oh huh? i'm like all right this is gonna be good because i had earlier played the superior game dmc and if you're not wrapped up in dm devil may cry universe like ninja theories dmc was a better fun game <laughs> i know i know it's immediate like wound some people up but DMC5, I was playing around with Proton settings to figure out, like, how do I get this thing? Do I want to run it with, you know, at the time, the new, uh, I don't even think we had DX12, but I was playing with a OpenGL versus VKD3D or whatever it was. Um, and I'd reset it too many times. I just started the damn game too many times and uninstalled <laughs> it and reinstalled the prefix to where it locked me out of the game I just bought. God, Within 40 me. minutes of buying the game, and it said I can't play the game for a day. Old it literally admonished the you. customer. Yeah. <laughs> this is not. This is not what we intended you to do. Go to your room. I I, un I installed the game too many times. How dare you? How it's... dare you use the thing that you bought the way you want to? But I went to bed feeling so safe that night. <laughs> well, yeah, knowing Capcom that you don't have any children protected you. <laughs> But we need to bring back E3 so the ESA could have something to be distracted with. <laughs> I was going to go for bored. the cocaine fueled after parties, but yes, also that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they have to prep for those cocaine fueled after yeah, parties. Yeah, you got to get all those canes. Do them mm -hmm. at a time. Mm hmm. It just, it's it just nonsense. fucks with YouTube when I do that, too. Because it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Is there a hyphen between co and cane? Yeah, dual, dual. <laughs> I mean, it clearly two canes, man. He's holding two canes. It's cocaine. Yeah. You guys think we're talking about drugs, you weirdos? <laughs> you know, some people and where their mind is at. Let's talk about something I, along with 
basically anybody familiar with um Gajin, 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 Gajin games, KFT. I made a little game called War Thunder. Like it's got a small but dedicated community. So tiny, very small. But um, they just straight up open source the engine for it, the um, Dagger engine. And like I went digging around in this thing. This is this week. I was like, what is this going to be like version two of this engine? I'm like, no, this is 6.0, man. This is like what they're running right now. It is there. It is available. And uh, War Thunder. What is War Thunder? It, it's that, it's uh, just that like game that you've Halloween. probably seen. It, you've like... probably seen the ads for this and World of Tanks and World of Ships. This basically combines all of the individual World of type of games into something that you can play. You have ships, planes, and tanks all hey, in one game. Whatever, I love it. It's got a penguin on it. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it, it does it's have a Linux native one. Store. Uh, so it's free to play. Ta- oh, they're not going to give me that tank. I, I'd play the game if it had that tank in it. It's freemium, yes. <laughs> it, oh, it's got merch. So you can be airplanes and tanks and. Oh, it does ships. have a Halloween for itself. <laughs> there's Halloween in October. There you go. Uh, LA Royale. There's videos of it. You know what? Yeah, Sons of a Dog. All right. Um,. Uh, let's see what this engine looks like. That it, looks like it, it doesn't look terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah. It looks like, I mean, for an online game, for uh, it looks pretty good. Looks yeah. pretty capable, yeah. Those trees are cold, so once you talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a building. Yeah, no, that, that, that looks perfectly crobulent as an engine, and if any of our dev slash devops peeps in... Uh, watching this or listening to this uh want to do some sleuthing there's probably a very solid multiplayer component in the source and it's all bsd3 license so uh go go have a look because there's a bunch of engines that could probably benefit from that uh it's yeah no that that's very good that's genuinely very very good I want to know why some people were like uh, theorizing uh, and I was reading uh, some of the comments on Hacker News or like it could be a loophole because they might have a contract with a uh, development studio or company in Russia. And this is one of the ways to distribute. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> like to make whole like a licensing agreement or something so they'd have access to whatever they're working. On. I don't know. End result is you can go get it. Maybe somebody will do something with it. There's nothing to it right now. Don't go in there like, how do I build this? Have fun. Figure it out. Yeah, there's already issues asking for that. No answers. Oh, really? Yeah, I saw a lot of posts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't yeah. think there's going to be a lot of um activity from the developers here. How to build on mm-hmm. Linux? <laughs> build to build. Oh, okay, let's see. All right, fine. I know we're running long, <laughs> but um, the gem build tool. Oh no, you need the gadget fork of the gem build. <laughs> <laughs> and you see my on Windows to generate it. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Try to make devtools.py. <sighs> you know what? You know what? It's at least, you know, I'm glad Windows nerds that have these adventures too, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're, we're very familiar with these. Types I do of not envy them trying to set up a proper. Um, no, no, no. Development no, environment on Windows. <laughs> some, somewhere around post four or five, this is no longer about building the engine. This is about winning, defeating an mm-hmm. enemy. Um, did, did they win? Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh yeah, War Thunder. Of course, we have to uh, <laughs> make sure that people check the 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 source engine to see if anyone's leaked any more classified uh, tank information. <laughs> <laughs> Because they need to win that internet argument to say, no, no, this tank uses this type of ammunition. Here's the... uh, (laughs) But Pedro, it was funny the first two times. (laughs) So they just kept doing it. (laughs) Hey, if you want to tell us uh, how you subvert uh, government secrets, you can do that by heading over to linuxgamecast.com. Smash that contact button, fam. How to read the things, you know, if you want to come on the show, we'd love to have you on the show. If you're working on a game open source project, just hit us up, crowdfunding campaigns. If you've got a Linux build, contact us, drag you in. And of course, if you want to send us marketing and all the other fun things, there's an email address. I have faith that you'll be able to figure it out. But we talked about the new version of lupus. 
not being on Steam. Yes. <laughs> Uh, there was the 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 ability of installing Lupus directly from um, the game mode, but uh, the, as it turns out, the creator of Lutherus, uh, one uh, Matthew Commandant, uh, has replied and says Lutherus requires a lot of libraries not usually used by games on Steam, like Python, GTK dependencies. Uh, running against the Steam runtime and possibly B Sandbox would make Lutherus impossible to function correctly. The Godot UI, because we also brought up the fact that, um, or I brought up the fact that Strider had been working or playing with the idea of having a native Godot UI for Lutris, says uh, the Godot UI still requires an underlying Lutris install for the same reason. Steam should add the ability to install flat packs on systems that do support it from the game UI so that Lutris could be installed without having to go into desktop mode. So there you go. It is the simple fact that <laughs> after seeing everything that Strider had to go through to get Lutris with everything it can do working properly on a flat pack so that you could, on your Steam Deck, just go into Discover and install Lutris, mm -hmm. that in itself was a journey. So thank you, Strider. Thank you very much. That That's helped a lot of people with running games that would never have worked on the Steam Deck otherwise. So Very nice. So where's that at, bro? <laughs> that that that's on Valve, I suppose. I don't know. To be yeah, able yeah. to say it's like, do you want to download a flat pack? You can have a flat pack. Maybe do a flat pack. Maybe we got other applications like Blender and stuff like that on the same store. Is that's an app image? Maybe I don't know. There's tons of like nonlinear video editors and other complex ass programs on Steam. Just they're just on Windows. We don't have them. Yeah, the, but uh, it's. Like if you're just downloading an app image that will that you could just deploy that via the um not the Steam all store, app just fine. Hmm? I don't think they're all app images, aren't they? No, they're not. Um, okay, most games are not. So, <laughs> but yeah, I'm saying for containerized applications like Flatpak style, uh, an app image works because an app image has everything contained in the app image itself. Flatpak is not like that it flat pack you need to run stuff yeah it's via, like an app image with a bunch of extra steps running yes <laughs> uh you have to run uh something that's been containerized with a flat pack you need to run it via the flat pack software and, and then you get you pressure have, vessel on top of everything else which, which is another container. that is that is a flat pack just modified by it gets silly real quick <laughs> it does <laughs> so yeah the what strider it wants is if a system already has Flatpak support installed and it has the required um, runtimes ready to go, there's absolutely no reason that Steam shouldn't allow uh, a Flatpak to just be downloaded. Which I, I agree, but that would require Valve to actually do something, which they're not going to do. Well, they made the Steam Deck, Pedro. <laughs> yes, they did. But the, the Steam Deck not already does enough. what Valve Throw wants away, them to toss do. It. <laughs> the Steam Deck already goes to the Steam store and plays. Some people made the right decision about the fuck was it? <laughs> the wrong, wrong ally? Asus? <laughs> yeah, an yeah. ROG ally, yeah. <laughs> the ROG you ally. Can two Do you mean my white, my white Steam Deck? Yeah. yeah. Clearly not. <laughs> yeah, it RGBs. Is. It's going to confuse the fuck out of some people on the YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> It is something to look forward to, Strider. Although, good luck convincing uh, a Valve to let you do that. I don't know. Um, yeah, all I all I'm reading is that the uh, next version of uh, Lutris is gonna be in Godot. Hundred percent guaranteed. <laughs> it 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 would make sense to have a game style UI that you could run from game mode, which would integrate properly with something like Emulation Station, oh, I but for know. Lutris. You got things like Emu Deck, right? Yeah, but e Emu Deck, you still have to go into desktop mode to set it up. But then once you have set it up, you still have to go into desktop mode to run the update script whenever you want to add new games, which is unfortunate. Which is like, that's just because you got to, like, if you were just on the desktop mode, you wouldn't even notice If you were it. on desktop mode mm -hmm. all the time, then yeah, you wouldn't have to worry about it. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe there's some like hybrid solution like that. Or not. Because, listen, man, 
like you got two types of people with steam decks one uh ones that just buy the asus rog and the other ones that like to tinker with them <laughs> yeah you know yeah my steam deck i don't seem to have any of these issues hey man i understand like i said you wanted to save some money oh yeah yeah the, you know it was it was much cheaper I made than a, a joke, steam Pedro. deck <laughs> much cheaper <laughs> I was thinking it's like even the non-extreme ally is still more expensive than the most expensive. Oh, no, Steam no, no, no. That, that's the get fucked edition. <laughs> yeah, anybody yeah. like who buys that Z1 uh, versus a Z1 extreme, like it's like, yes, I'm going to pay a hundred dollars less for twenty-five percent of the GPU performance. Yeah. Mm. It, huh. I, I, it, if that thing was like two hundred fifty dollars or something, it'd be one thing. But... Oh no, that's the Logitech wireless video streamer. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. I mean, not to be confused with the PlayStation wireless video streamer, which is tethered to your console. Right. You can't do anything else with it, even yeah. though they have a streaming. Why service. would you need anything else once you're part of the PlayStation family? Yeah. Yeah, but part of the PlayStation family. <laughs> Is a streaming service through PlayStation Plus that their PlayStation Portable, their new PlayStation Portal, whatever, doesn't even support. Yeah. <laughs> that's why everyone was making the joke that it I was mean, the that's how you PlayStation know it's an Wii PlayStation U. product, though, right? I guess. <laughs> I guess. I just, I was dumbfounded when they, when they announced that, oh no, it only connects to the console. I mean, we, do, we don't want you to hurt yourself. <laughs> it can only do one thing. It's the PlayStation Wii U. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Up next, ladies and gentlemen, is research because I dared admit. I dared. I said, you know what? I talked about it last week. I'm like, yeah, I subscribe to uh, YouTube, you know, for research. That's what I said. I knew when the words were coming out of my mouth. I'm like, here we fucking go. Here it fuck it is, uh, from DC119. They write, you subscribe to YouTube Premium, question mark, for research, air quotes, uh, alrighty, comma, then. What's you misspelled your name there. Uh, my name? <laughs> that was a joke on the alrighty, then, alrighty, then. Ah, oh, got it. <laughs> it back. wasn't a good joke, but yes. Right. No, it's, it's funny now that you've explained it. <laughs> um no man like i i immediately clap back to this because i taught myself how to fucking weld using youtube videos and you know what you really don't want when you have molten fucking metal around you welcome to my garage i remember <laughs> like we, those of you of a certain age know that fucking video man um I just don't want to fucking, if you give me an option not to watch ads, like, I don't feel the need to justify, like, what, I don't know what you would watch on YouTube. YouTube's fucking tame. Uh, but yeah, that is, I have brought this up a couple of times. Like, we're very close to the scene in the original Matrix. I was like, do you know how to fly that thing? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> you yeah. know, I, YouTube, for me, is that repository of information. I'm like, huh. So it's usually, that broke. Um, do I know how to fix that? <laughs> Not yet. Give me a moment. Bye, Pedro. Hi, Pedro. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, John, what do you use YouTube for? Just, uh, yeah, you know, um, uh, like you, like you just said, any, anything that you want to, uh, look up real quick, like anything you need to get done, something breaks. Okay, I can look it up on YouTube. Something's wrong with my car. All right, this is the light that came on that I can't find in the manual. Let me go on YouTube. And, like, ads on YouTube are just so intrusive. Like, I don't understand the timing of them sometimes. It, it's, it's so random. You would know better how they integrate them into videos. But I, like... Oh, please let me fucking have the option to do this tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it just, it doesn't I make any sense to me. I have the perfect place to stick it in. 
Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> and, and worse than that, the two and a half hour ads or the nine <laughs> hour ads. Because yes, those exist. Yeah, those are a, things that get pushed into your face. It is and if your hands are busy, who fall asleep. Yes. Oh, if but, your hands are busy, or you if you're using a, a video to fall asleep, uh, so many instances that you can't immediately reach over and skip the ad, you're stuck with the plus five dB ad that just started blaring in your oh, ears, yeah. and it's going to keep blaring for that another two happen. hours. <laughs> Everything's normalized to um minus fourteen. They I seem will, louder. <laughs> yes, I don't know. Then, then I have to explain psychoacoustics to you, and we don't have a fucking another three hours here. <laughs> uh, the although uh, YouTube isn't the bigger offender there, uh, Spotify is much worse in that respect. Spotify, I have fuck all idea. Um, if anybody's <laughs> ever curious about how loud something is on YouTube, right click, go to stats for nerds. It'll tell you right there. Ours is always going to be like. 2 dB, it's going to be adjusted louder 2 dB because we record the podcast at 16 lofts and it wants 14 lofts. Spotify on the hand wants 14 lofts and I could go on for, like I said, another two hours. Um, <laughs> moral of the story is I don't have any hate for anybody that subscribes to Disney or YouTube or whatever, but yeah, I, I'm old and I'm boring. I meant it when I said I used YouTube for research. Also, I watch DBZ abridged commentary videos. Where do you go? Where, where the fuck do you go to watch the other shit, man? Like Odyssey? Do you, do you want to watch the same video from YouTube, but in worse quality? And while you're going down that rabbit hole of the thing you're researching, you really going to want to get interrupted by ads. Mm. If you give me the option to get rid of ads, I'll pay to get rid of ads. Plus, I also know as a creator, uh, we get support. Like when you watch our stuff where an ad would be, we get the YouTube red premium. It's got its own little thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Also, if you hate ads, everybody, you can become a patron. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. I have an ad-free version of this very show up right now. You're also going to get it earlier because I'm fucking tired of waiting on YouTube to do the RNG. We had a bad roll the other week, week before last. It was like almost midnight before that video got done processing. It was up for patrons way earlier. So we're going to do that as a little thank you if you can support the show. Check us a buck a week or $100,000 a week. It'd be brilliant. We would build an IR. We'd probably buy one of those. Uh, have you seen those new Japanese mechs? No. no. I saw the, I saw the like Gundam looking one that they were doing. Yeah. Which was uh, $400,000. Yeah. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Listen, some people want a retirement house. Me? <laughs> I'm just saying. We I'm, all need goals. We, we will spend everything. Super responsible, but head over to our support page. We get Libra Pay, PayPal, one time donations, Bitcoin. Speaking of cryptocurrency, ladies, uh, I remembered that we had that and I opened the app and we had received uh, a couple of milli BTC, milli Bitcoins, uh, mm -hmm. which was pretty dope. I was like, oh, that's neat. If you know the amount, like send me a message and I'll give you a shout out on the show. Um, oh, we need, we need 32 more milli bitcoins and uh i i could do the most punk rock thing ever i, I could finish that epic build using cryptocurrency <laughs> that would be awesome that'd be pretty fucking cyberpunk right there i'm like fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> um we do thank you for your support uh or just sharing the show showing up live hanging out with us and um careful you will be recruited and uh conscripted into service like this poor bastard right here in the middle of us yes <laughs> And you, I, you genuinely important. believe that you volunteered for it, but you didn't. It was incepted. <laughs> it's all a trick of the you mind. Had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Uh, also, we got Amazon wish list. Uh, it's been a while since we've taken a look at uh, Pedro's life of crime wish list. <laughs> Speaking of, yeah, all right, climb. What do you need to? What do you need to break open with that? Uh, no, that is for uh, actually getting the. Uh, squeezy piston thing off the brake calipers down so how, that I can put in new pads. How do they fit all that on the packaging? Squeezy piston. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, no, it's the, the uh, like the, the actual piston on the brake caliper to push it down. I tried to push it down by hand. Not gonna no, no, you need, you need a 
clamps for that. Um, yeah, so that's why that one's there. Uh, I, I haven't bought the new brake pads yet, so I it's there until I do. <laughs> Jordan needs two video cards. All right, Evo, Mike Arm. Wait, you want one for the wall? All right, live a little. And uh, yeah, I got one for the studio. As I always say, you end up back here. Publicly shamed if you get anything from there. But again, that's all like, well, you know, the Rams. I want that goth cheese grater, baby. Corsair <laughs> 7000D. Blankets. Exciting things for the studio. Um, you know me, love them. We do thank you for your support. But if I was going to look for your YouTube channel, John, you thought yes. I forgot, didn't I? No, you know. Because I, I fucking did until like a minute ago. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. I, I didn't get a chance to it, upload something today, but it's something it, will be up tomorrow. If, if I was Wrath of John. Going to, for a hyperlink. Uh, <laughs> I will type this in then. Wrath of John. I'm sorry. I should have provided a hyperlink. <laughs> Just post that link into Discord. People watching yeah, us live can click actually... on it. And everyone uh, else on uh, watching this later, you can look at that. Look we down found there. it. You need to update. I think <laughs> yes. you can update your URL. So it's something other than YouTube for slash channel slash UCXFCZYY underscore. <laughs> Why? It's so cool. I mean, you know what? If you want to hide from the people, you do you, <laughs> man. Um, no, I think it's a view limitation. They don't let you update it until... They've the changed the level. policies on that. Everybody can have their own... Uh, oh, really? Yeah, that's why we have like the Uncut channel, which is like at Linux Gamecast under Uncut, but the Linux Gamecast channel is just straight up YouTube. Then I will, I will update it. Yeah, man. You, you can change it to your stage name that you used in the uh, late 90s. What was it? Frictionless Torpedo? Something mm-hmm. like that? Yeah. yeah a little known fact. Mm-hmm. That's on my wiki. It is? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on that uh, frictionless bombshell, <laughs> very slippery. We need we need to get out of here, so we're gonna bring that music up. Uh, if you want to find me, you can always find me. I'm still on Zitter at Venstone, doing the thing there. We have a federated timeline. If you like the mastodons, if you want to use the social media network that actually non ironically uses the word toot, we got you covered over at mass.linuxgamecast.com. All the other places you'll find your regular, lovable, huggable, uh, harmless little fuzzball old men. Then, where you is? Oh, I, I am, I am uh, Twitch dot TV slash Ogiwan, and that's it. Rats of John YouTube. No social medias. None. That's fine. I, I I'm kind of uh, envious. I'm still on uh, Mastodon. I, I'm I'm going to keep hanging around because where else am I going to go? Uh, it's uh, under uh, unaccounted for with the actual number four at mass.linuxgamecast.com. It's uh, yeah, come join the federation, uh, Mastodon. Toot toot. Use the forest, <laughs> bet. Time for some credits. Yay! Technically, somewhat true. Technically correct. Ish. The best kind of correct. <laughs> oh, man. If you're able to help us out, uh, you end up in the credits, too. It's just a tradition. We've had credits since forever. Like our advisors, Omega and Arthur, and the executive producers, Barbara and Scott Michaud, Sammy Cass, Mike G, Drummer, Tamash, Hakeem, David, um, Ishep, and Ian. And Chicago Kicks Ass, Super Desto, MT, Glorious Egg Roll, and Nubbin. And the Sea Monsters, Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin Nubin, Darkwing, System T, Dancing Joe, Why is Ogi One, there he is, Sherlings. and Kyrillo. <laughs> you can see Yogi. He's right there. Man, <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> All of our lovely Cherlings, up to and including these back 12. And of course, Tim. Find upstanding cannibals on Frank's Wall of Fuck. Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Lennox, Drew, Aldeus, Noctilus, John, Eshep, Game of Tron, Neonoid, DSN, Joe. Aromatic now then. Can I draw? Right. John, what did we you learn this week? Oh, uh, nothing much, man. I, I'm used to working a lot of overtime, and I lost it, so I'm kind of just like going to Spider-Man 2 it up and see what I'm going to do after that. Probably Video Super Mario Brothers <laughs> Wonder, because we all love Nintendo right now. Nintendo hard. <laughs> Die to fight, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye.
five dudes. <laughs>